Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Let Us Reason live stream. This is our weekly, uh, basically, spot with our dear brother, Alex Lagaevich, and I am so honored to have you back again, brother. How are you? Uh, uh, absolutely awesome. Uh, and uh, I'm happy to be with you as every Wednesday. Uh, very much look forward to it every beginning of the week. I'm so excited when Wednesday comes uh, around and to be with you and you people who are watching, uh, just enjoy really this time together, Brother Al. And bless you. God bless you in everything you do. I know you I have some, uh, some amazing speakers come to your show. And uh, thank God for technology. I thank God every day for technology. Uh, when I came to America to call back my family, it was a dollar a minute just to call them. Forget about uh, right. FaceTime or, uh, or uh, Zoom, you know, now for free, for free, no excuses. We get to be able to do things like this and people to uh, interact. And what a beautiful way to touch souls all around the world. And that's what I pray for. I pray that souls from all around the world, everywhere, from all four corners of the earth, that they will uh, be watching things like this and other uh, shows you have with speakers and people and apologists and that they will be drawn closer to our Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. And I, you know, from the beginning, I just want to remind everybody that uh, uh, from now until who knows, Jesus comes, we're going to have uh, Brother Alex with us. And uh, I like, I was thinking the other day about a name. I said, Al X with Alex. All right. Yeah, so yeah. I am an ex Muslim That's uh, with Alex, you know, Alex the apologist, you know. And I love this. I uh, the uh, same thing today, by the way. The same thing today. How I had a yeah, uh, uh, vision in my mind of uh, you saying, my name is Alex, it's almost like Alex. I said, yeah, yes, except uh, I, have, I am an ex. <laughs> yeah, that's that's awesome. And, and I love this. Uh, by the way, everybody, I'm going to ask uh, Alex uh, uh, shortly to give you just a quick background because I know not all of you, by the way, have joined us from the beginning. And what I love about what we're doing for the last 28 days, folks, I want to just thank everyone here. And I want to thank my speakers like Alex. We bumped our subscription by almost 4,000 so far in the last 28 days, which is unusual. But that shows how God allows us, even in the midst of difficulties and lockdowns, to still bring glory to his name. So we are thankful for his uh, provision for his grace. It has nothing to do with me. Amen. I wasn't the brain behind the operation. It was his brain, his wisdom that gave us this idea to be able to bring glory to his name. So we're thankful for technology, as my brother, you know, mentioned, uh, you know, uh, I, I remember those days, collection calls and all kind of stuff, you know, now, you know what, we're in the business of collecting souls, not collection calls anymore. We want to collect souls Amen. to enter into the kingdom. Brother, why don't you give just your two-minute snippet about who you are? How can people okay. track with you your blog or website so that they know what, uh, who uh, I mean, uh, which person uh, we have here? Because not everybody knows about your background. And then, what is it that we're doing week in and week out? Go ahead. Thank you, brother Al. Uh, so again, my name is Alex. Uh, it's uh, the name is from last name from uh, former Yugoslavia, from Serbia. And in Serbia, it's called, it's pronounced Blagojevic. Uh, I was born and raised in France, and uh, I used to pronounce my last name the French way, which is Blagojevic. Uh, no big deal, it doesn't matter. I, I, uh, I like that, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And uh, it's all good. Uh, so people have called me much worse, you know. And uh, uh, I used to work uh, in, in Indiana as a student for a Subway restaurants, you know, the fast food chain. And I, I guess my boss, wanted to give me an award and he went to uh, Staples or wherever office depot and he forgot how to spell my last name so he just uh, put Alex and he spelled out BS uh, and uh, so he said, that's close enough so you know I've, I've been called worse I've been called worse uh, so anyway but um, so I I, uh, uh, I came to Christ in 2003 I went home to commit suicide and the Lord Jesus appeared to me uh, I did not see him I saw my whole life come in front of my eyes and, um, and, but I, I felt being in Jesus's hands while I was seeing my whole life and how he had worked with me my whole life, even though I was belligerent, I was an atheist, I was distant from him. He had worked with me because of course, God knows the beginning and the end. He knows everything and he's omniscient. And he knew I would uh, eventually be a, 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 a come to the family of Christ. And so he protected me while I was blind and he was with me, walked with me. After that, I um, 
just uh, fell in love with Christ, obviously, and uh, fell in love with apologetics, thanks to our brother, Rabbi Zacharias, the departed late um, Rabbi Zacharias, Dr. Zacharias, who's with the Lord now. Uh, he got me excited about apologetics, and then other people got me excited, Liz Strobel, um, and, uh, and then later on, uh, David Wood, we became part of, uh, of the ministry together. We debated together in, in France a few times with uh, Muslims. Um, and the Lord opened up uh, uh, for me to, uh, to uh, reach out Muslims. And I really have a heart for Muslims because when I grew up in France, my parents were immigrants. And we grew up in a, in a part of Paris where uh, there were a lot of immigrants. So most, all of, pretty much all of my friends were Muslims, were uh, North African Muslims. And my best friend is still, uh, well, I was going to say still North African. Well, yeah, he'll always be North African, but he's not a Muslim anymore. He gave his life to Christ. So, uh, and uh, so, but when I first came to Christ, I really believed, I really believed after I had that experience with the Lord, I really believed that uh, Islam was going to be the way. And the reason was, is because I saw like Saudis, you know, uh, again, I didn't know Saudis, but when you look at Saudis, they seem very uh, zealous about their faith and so uh, that uh, zeal for their for their belief system uh, you know uh, is appealing to someone like me who had just come to 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 Christ and didn't know anything about religion or faiths or the Bible Quran I thought for sure because I had, most of my friends were Muslims so I started going to Muslims and asking them questions and um, they would give me uh, their answers i liked i actually kind of liked their answers but then it didn't match up with what i was reading in the quran and uh, the hadiths and sira which is the biography of muhammad so i wanted to know for myself not what my friends were telling me although i was interested in what anybody had to say whether it's a buddhist hindu does didn't matter just tell me why you think what you believe is the truth um, and I knew there was a truth. Okay, there couldn't be conflicting truths, right? You couldn't have black and white at the same time uh, being the same colors. Uh, if uh, if, if so, something uh, said something, claimed something, the opposite could not be true. Uh, so either Jesus was crucified or he wasn't. Either he, raised from, he was raised from the dead or he wasn't. You, could, you can have uh, UK can 82. Uh, so you can't have a law of contradiction. Uh, it just doesn't apply. So that's why right away I kind of uh, uh, dismissed Hinduism, Buddhism, all that stuff because it's uh, all inclusive and, and truth is not all inclusive. It's exclusive. Uh, truth right. is truth. Truth is truth. Your name is Alfadis, not Alex Bagoyevich. And my name is not Alfadis. It's Alex Bagoyevich. So you can't have, uh, it sounds open minded to say that all truths or all truth statements or, um, you know, are true or claims, truth claims are true, but it sounds open-minded, tolerant, but actually it's not. It's, it's extremely intolerant and actually some of the most intolerant people are people who call, speak of tolerance. But anyway, so, uh, so David Wood influenced me, Sam Shamoon had a big influence. He also came and debated with me in France. And uh, so I really look up to these people on you, Al, uh, people who have really influenced me. Jay Smith helped me uh, for my first debate. I was so nervous uh, because I really didn't know as much as uh, people like Jay Smith and David Wood when I started. Um, and, but he helped me. He helped me with my debate and, uh, and um, uh, some other people uh, helped me. Um, some of the, I'm trying to think of, of some names, but they may not want me to mention their name. So anyway, so people helped me uh, and, and uh, I started reaching out Muslims because I love them. Uh, you know, a lot of times people have asked me, even Christians have asked me, I don't know if I mentioned it before, why do you hate Muslims? After, after every time I speak, I preach or teach at churches or, or secular places, the first thing I say, and then I repeat it throughout my talk, is listen to me carefully. There's a difference between a people and an ideology, okay? I, you may really dislike an ideology and think it's completely false, but you don't necessarily have to hate the people for that reason. So uh, I keep repeating it throughout my talk because you can be a Democrat, I can be a Republican, we can completely disagree, but I can completely respect you as a human being, the same as a Muslim. I can respect you, and of course I would never bag all Muslims in the same bag, they come all in, in different colors and flavor. So, uh, so to, again, just because I have an issue with Islam and I believe it's completely false, um, uh, completely false doesn't mean that there are not truths in, in its teachings, but rather than it's false as a whole. 
uh, doesn't mean that I hate Muslims. That is so silly of a claim, and yet people keep repeating it. Why do you guys hate Muslims? No, we don't hate Muslims. If we hated Muslims, we wouldn't uh, preach the good news to them, and we wouldn't put our lives in danger. We wouldn't be doing all this. We do all those things because we love Muslims. And uh, so, uh, because we want love everyone, actually, it's not just Muslims. This is not about Muslims. My book is not about Islam, really. It's about Christianity. I wanted to write one on Islam, but then I was like, no, my first book, I'll make it pro-Christianity, not anti-anything. So I wanted to write my book, which is pro, uh, uh, pro-Christianity, pro why I believe in the Bible, 25 reasons. I want to right, keep it right. very, very simple and short because I wanted to give it to uh, Uber drivers and people I meet on the streets and I don't want them to have to read a three, four hundred page book, which would they never will, uh, people, because people's attention span is so limited, especially with social media, uh, they're bombarded with information. So I want something simple, short, that, uh, that the, 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 the person who really doesn't read books can read, and the person who reads um, um, thousands of books, who's very educated, PhD, can also read, and it can be very flat, factual, and I can I would actually challenge those people to tell me where this where uh, I'm I am being wrong because people have been brainwashed. It's incredible how f powerful lies have been. Uh, you know, the lie of Islam, the lie of of secular uh, secularism, uh, hedonism, you name it, existentialism. Those lies have become uh, bankrupt. Even people who uh, who espoused those ideologies, uh, most of the uh, people like Albert Camus and uh, Jean-Paul Sartre, to just to name a couple, uh, said at the end of their lives that their philosophies have been wrong, and yet they still live. Those ideas still live. So our battle is not against people. Our battle is not against uh, groups of people, against uh, uh, you know people in a sp specific religion or 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 ideology. No, our our fight is directly with the ideology itself. I'll use you just one more example, then we can uh, start uh, start uh, point number. 15, I think that's where we stopped. Anyway, uh, my parents grew up in, in a communist regime and communism destroyed the whole world, at least the eastern part of Europe and countries that like China and other co countries that espouse uh, communism. So there's absolutely nothing wrong to speak against communism. When I speak against communism, uh, you wouldn't ever say, why do you hate Cubans? You know, it's, it's, it seems fairly obvious that when you attack an ideology, I hope it's obvious that you're not attacking a people, although people will be very sensitive and very offended. That's just part of human nature, but that's not, that's not my fault. You know, when you attack Christianity, I don't get offended. I will just give you an answer because there are answers to your questions. I hope you're honest, but I'm, I don't get offended. I, you know, I, I actually welcome uh, challenges on, as long as they're honest uh, challenges. But most people who uh, would believe in lies don't like to be challenged. Uh, and, uh, but that's not my problem. That's their problem. The, the issue is that when you, when you attack communism, you're not attacking every Cuban person or every Russian person. That's not the, 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 the attack. The attack is against a system that literally fails people 100% of the time, every single time, and enslaves them. So we must speak against false ideologies, and that's why I speak mm -hmm. pro-Christianity, of course, to, to, to deliver a message of uh, truth so that people can see why the Bible can be trustworthy um, and, and, uh, and why Jesus is Lord and why he died for people's sins and he's the only way to the Father through his blood. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and at the same time, speak against other ideologies like communism because it was an ideology that destroyed my family. And it was only by the grace of God that my parents left communism, went to France, and then I was able to come to America. So we must speak uh, for, for ideologies and against, against false ideologies also, because if we don't, then they will continue to creep in. And then your children and grandchildren guarantee, I guarantee you, your children and grandchildren will say, Grandpa, why didn't you fight a false ideology? Now we're paying the price of it. So we must do it for the sake of truth because we love truth above anything else. We love truth. And truth with a capital T became a person and his name is Jesus Christ. He Amen. is the truth. Amen. He is the Amen. truth of life and the way to God. And then thank and you, brother, brother, for giving all this background. background. Uh, uh, if, you, if you can mute me, uh, by the way, at your end. I don't I'm know if you're listening to you.
Uh, are you listening to the YouTube at your end? If you can mute it, that would be uh, helpful also. I'm oh, this, I'm missing something. Huh? Yeah, it's, it's just I'm getting feedback. Um, uh, I want to, uh, by the way, thank our moderators. Thank you so much. Thank you, Fred Sanford, for listing some of our rules. Uh, there is a lot of uh, the moderators here, and I am so thankful for your uh, work with us. Um, you know, I want to tell people that uh, we're not here to attack each other. Uh, please li listen to the topic, listen to the dialogue, listen to the answers, ask questions that are related to the topic, please. Try not to distract, of course. But if you insult, I assure you, before the moderators even push a button, you'll be gone. I mean, I'm paying attention to everything that is taking place. Now, with that in mind, I want to thank also uh, Somali Christian TV, by the way. I will be in touch. I definitely will be in touch. I do have your email already, and we need to talk, and we need to see how we can bring you uh, here uh, to share your amazing testimony. With that said, brother, uh, the book that we are featuring for the last couple of weeks is your book that yes. has yet to be published. It's called Why uh, I Trust in the Bible. And we, you mentioned there's about 25 reasons. We've covered so far 14 of those. Now today is reason number 15. Maybe, maybe we'll venture into 16, but it sounded to me, uh, based on what you told me, that this will take us a while today uh, to cover. So with yes. that said, I'm going to turn it over to you, and I, Priyalki, I'll interject you know, some thoughts with you. And I want to thank everybody for joining us again. This is Let Us Reason live stream. Every now and then, I'm going to remind you folks about the rest of the week as far as our live stream and topics, and also some exciting things that are coming also in the next couple of weeks. Go ahead, brother. Okay. Thank you, brother Al. And, and uh, um, yes, this one is going to, uh, can, can take longer. Uh, all of them can take a long time because I have so much to say about each one of them. In the book, they will be much shorter because I really don't want to overwhelm people with, uh, with those reasons. But because we're doing this, this series and we uh, have time to discuss each one of them, I do want to spend some time on uh, each one of them uh, in details because I think they're so powerful. In my book, like I said, in, by, for respect, but you know, uh, by respect for people, uh, I want to keep it fairly short and simple so that they get the main point. And the main point is so, always so important because we must always start from the foundation, from the fundamental teachings to the peripheral ones. You must always start with the main arguments, the main uh, fundamental points of each uh, uh, belief system and then work our way out. Uh, that's the problem with most people. Most people look at the peripheral uh, um, similarities between, for example, Christianity and Islam, and they, they dismiss them being so fundamentally different. So we must start with the fundamental points. So that's what I want to do in the book. But here, uh, point 15 is the scientific, uh, uh, the scientific claims of the Bible. Uh, and this one is uh, interesting, and I must... I must say before I get into it that uh, the Bible is not a scientific book. So I want people to understand we don't go to the Bible to find the cure for coronavirus, you know, for COVID-19. We don't go to the Bible for that. It's not a scientific book, but it tells us something about, about nature, about God, about the laws of nature that we can take from and we can learn from the basics of science. And the reason it's important is because uh, a lot of people throughout history have missed those points and have ridiculed the Bible. And if they had only known what the Bible had been teaching uh, about uh, what we could know about science, then they would have uh, progressed very much faster and discovered many, many, many things much sooner. Let me give you some examples. Uh, uh, before I get into the scientific revolution, because I do want to talk about that very quickly. Uh, but uh, it is very important that if you really think about it, the, um, the Bible uh, is speaking of creation, right? That the whole uh, creation uh, was created. And yet, for the longest time, scientists, um, not in the, during the scientific revolution, but then after that, uh, for example, Einstein believed that the uh, the universe was eternal and that it was infinite, that he had existed forever. So obviously that it was completely, completely in the contradiction with the Bible. So who was right? Um, and if, if Einstein and others had believed in the Bible, 
uh, then much sooner would have, have they known that uh, the, the, the universe is not eternal, that is, it, it did start at one point in time. And guess when we discovered that? Instead of discovering centuries ago, we discovered just in the 1960s, so only 50, 60 years ago. That is so ridiculous. Um, when we discovered the Big Bang, which uh, a lot of uh, atheist uh, scientists who were, which were atheists were really upset about that discovery because he gave too much credibility to the Bible, to Christianity, and they didn't like that. Uh, but if we had known that there was a starting point, we would have known that uh, the Big Bang was obvious and that obvious in the sense that, you know, of course, the Big Bang has to be explained scientifically, which you can't. You cannot go sign in a lab and, 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 and create something from nothing. That just doesn't happen. Uh, so the fact that people do believe still to this day that, uh, that this whole universe, uh, which is, by the way, fine-tuned, came from nothing, uh, that from nothing uh, came something. Uh, and uh, there was an interview in a, in a documentary called Expelled, uh, with Ben Stein, who made that documentary. Uh, he interviewed, at the end of the documentary, he interviews uh, Richard Dawkins, one of the most uh, belligerent atheists in the world from Oxford. And he asked him, where does it come from? Where does the, this universe come from? Where did it start? And he said, I don't know. It's, you know and so he, 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 every time he said something, then Ben Stein would say, how about before that? What created that? So we would keep, keep going back and back and back. Finally, uh, he said, well, Crystals, creates crystals that created the whole universe. Think about it. A tiny, tiny crystals would somehow create the whole universe and fine tune it in the way that, that, uh, that we have it. By the way, matter cannot uh, create life, cannot start life, but that's another topic. So he kept saying, before crystals, crystals, how about, he said, I don't know. He started getting angry a little bit. He said, well, please tell me, what, what is it? Maybe God? And he said, no. He started yelling, no, not God. Well, then what? I don't know, aliens. So Dawkins knew that there was something, some mind behind uh, all of this, all, the, all of this creation, but he would not give a credit to God. So he would rather give a credit to aliens. But then, of course, the question is who created aliens? Um, so you can keep going that way. But the fact that the Bible teaches that the, the, the whole world, the universe, everything, the created order came to be, at one point of time, if we had just known, but since then we've 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 we found it with the Big Bang and with the second law of thermo thermodynamics, which teaches that you know everything is cooling off, and if it's cooling off, it all started at one point where it was really hot. Same with uh, if you have cup, coffee on your table and it's lukewarm, well you know that at one point it was warmer. If it goes from lukewarm to cold, then you know that you know it's been it's been cooling off, and that's the, that's the same thing with the second law of uh, thermo thermodynamics, uh, which uh, uh, de demonstrates that there was a beginning in time. Uh, but even if we had known about the Bible, we would not have had uh, people believe in Darwinism. And when I mean Darwinism, doesn't mean that Darwin was wrong on everything, but he was wrong on his main uh, ideas. And his main ideas was that, you know, we all came from one source and one uh, single uh, parent and that uh, animal kingdom, everything, came and he believed in macroevolution. Now, microevolution, when people ask me if I believe in, in uh, evolution, I say it depends if you mean macro or micro, and then they have no idea what I'm talking about. Micro just means that we evolve individually and that we evolve within our species. That's, that's, that's not a problem. I don't have a problem with that. But macroevolution is saying that we all come from one species, and that's not true. And Darwin was actually completely wrong. He didn't have any, it was a theory, and that's what most scientific uh, theories are at the beginning. They're theories, and then you just research it. But you, the only way to find out if it's true, the theory, you must uh, really attack it within it, it itself and then to question everything in order to find out if it's true. It was a theory. But Darwin believed that within one century, we would discover enough fossils uh, to uh, what they call transitionals to show that we uh, have common, uh, common uh, ancestors. And uh, he believed that, really believed it, that, uh, you know, that, that within 100 years, we were billions of, uh, of fossils. Well, guess what? Uh, two centuries later, uh, more than two centuries later, we have uh, no fossils that show any transitions. So even Stephen Jay Gould from uh, Harvard University, one of the greatest paleontologists, uh, uh, said that, um, that we, uh, it's embarrassing. I think he used the word embarrassing 
the lack of, uh, of uh, fossils, transitional fossils we have, uh, and that uh, we should not even be seeking to find them anymore. So if we had known, my point is, if we had known about God, we had known about uh, who he is, and here's, now let me, let me jump into the scientific revolution. The scientific revolution came from scientists who were Christians. And what drove them to be scientists, what drove them to discover all the things that they had discovered was four simple points. Number one, that we can understand the universe um, because the universe was created by God. So if God created the universe, uh, we, that was point number one, that we know that God created the universe. And the second point is that we are created in God's image. And since we're God, uh, creating God's image, we can understand. We have also have capacity, mental capacity, to understand about creation because we are created in God's image, which is very different than Islam, by the way. Number three, uh, we can learn uh, um, that, um, that creation tells us about God, that when we learn about creation, that we learn through, uh, through science about the natural order, that we can learn about God uh, through our discoveries and that we can have more faith in God by our discoveries. So God is uh, created the world. He is created in his image. We can understand the world because we create his image and because our God is a God of law and order. And finally, that understanding creation is a way of war worship uh, of, uh, of God. So by, by discovering uh, things of nature, uh, we can actually uh, get closer to God and worship him. That, that's, that was the mindset of the scientists during the scientific revolution. Uh, I just want to go back because I'm, I'm going back and forth um, on, um, on, uh, on Darwin, uh, because he also believed that not only we would have the fossils, uh, to show that we are transitionals, that we all come from one species. But also, he believed that it took a long period of time, so millions and millions and millions and millions of years to develop. So that's why we couldn't see it with a naked eye. Uh, and then we found out through the Cambrian explosion that actually most of the species came about in a very, very, very short period of time. So that's very interesting when we started digging to find out the layers and to find out that most of the species today on Earth came in a very short period of time. So that also destroyed the theory of Darwin. Uh, Alex, so uh, I, I want to interject one thing, if you don't mind, yes. uh, just for the benefit of people knowing uh, what the Bible says about this idea that we made out of fossils or there is a transition and evolution and things like that. Just one verse. You're familiar with it, of course, for the benefit mm -hmm. of our uh, uh, viewers. Uh, if our viewers will just take note of this, if you go to Hebrews chapter 11, and I'm going to read three verses, verses one to three, because all of it in context will make sense here. It's about faith. It says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the mm -hmm. conviction of things not seen, yeah. for by it the people of old received their comm uh, commendations. Listen to verse three. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God so that what is seen was not, yeah. notice, was not made out of things that are visible. Did you catch this, everybody? Nothing came out of something. We came out of nothing, ex nihilo. That's the word, that's the yeah. phrase that we use. So this idea of evolving from one thing to the other is just mm -hmm. bogus. That's what it is. In fact, I learned this in a seminary. It's called baloney. That's what it is. Okay, brother. Yeah. Go ahead. And, by the, and by the way, Muslims would agree on on, on those those things we just talked about. Um, because, oh, absolutely. I'm just because, trying to make sure. Everyone, by the way, the Quran does talk about the Big Bang theory. Yes. Just to uh, let you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they, because it's borrowing from uh, so a lot of the ideas on Islam, in Islam are borrowed from uh, Judeo-Christian views and the Bible. So, uh, so like I said, fundamentally, it's it's completely different and it's false. But it borrows from from also from uh, Judeo-Christian views. And so some of it is going to be true, and that what I'm talking about is 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 shared. But what's interesting, brother, is uh, thank you for mentioning that. And and uh, you know when you when you read when I think of that that verse, uh, it, it it it's so important to remember if we're Christians, please if you're Christian, remember our the biblical definition of faith, not the world's definition of faith. The world's definition of faith is that you know a faith is just a belief, you know, a uh, based on on no evidence. 
No, that's not what the Bible says. Our faith is, uh, is, 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 is based on evidence, on assurance, on things that we know to be true. So uh, faith is not blind. Uh, it's be some beliefs are blind, but true faith, true faith is not blind. It's based on, on the evidence. And that's what we're talking about in my book is because I believe that uh, there's uh, plenty of very extremely strong evidence for belief in the Bible. So, uh, so again, when be, be, be careful when people, when other people speak of the word faith. Again, they hijack the word and to mean something completely different from uh, the meaning of the Bible. So just uh, on a side note, brother, uh, because you read that passage. Amen, amen. And I thank you, Christian Apologetics, also for mentioning uh, something about the meaning of the word. And by the way, uh, uh, Fred, if uh, Sayyid 11 is giving you a hard time, you know what to do, my friend. Don't worry about it. So go ahead, Alex. Okay, so very quickly, uh, very quickly, I'm going to try to make it quick, but I do want to talk about the scientific revolution because um, what the scientific re revolution, of course, a lot of atheists, uh, scientists are taking uh, uh, credit for scientific, scientific revolution, but that came about right after, you know, the, what, what, we, what we know as the Renaissance, right? The Renaissance is a new birth. Well, guess where, when that kind came from? After the Reformation, after the Reformation, all kinds of good things came about. The, uh, sadly, the church, the Catholic Church, had had had, uh, had too much power before the uh, Reformation and was uh, really hurting itself and hurting Christianity. Um, and uh, I'm not anti-Catholic. I just uh, believe that you know that there are some dark spots in the history of, of the church. That's fine, and uh, we must admit it. Uh, so Reformation came about, you know, 1517 when uh, when Luther uh, nailed his 95 theses. But then after that was an incredible movement uh, called the Renaissance, and the scientific revolution was at the back end of that uh, in, in, certain, in 1543. But I just want to, uh, two things, I want to mention just a few names, even though there are a lot of names. And by the way, David Wood made a, a really wonderful uh, video, uh, I think it's called um, Science, Atheism, uh, and Christianity, something like that. It's a wonderful video he made. On, uh, I, don't, on, I don't know nothing about this guy, David Wood, you know? Uh, know good, good. Stay, stay away from him. Uh, but I just want to mention some names, and they were very strong Christians, and then I want to quote a few of uh, their quotes because I think it's important because those people are the people who started the scientific revolution and who believed on those four things. Remember those four factors? A, that we are created, created by God, that the universe is created by God. B, that we're creating God's image, therefore we can understand creation. Uh, see that we uh, that um, learning about creation tells us something about God, and and, and then D that by uh, uh, finding out and learning more about creation, we are it's a, a form of worship of God. Those are the scientists who believed in those things. So they were driven by the Christian faith, um, which is not based on a on a blind faith, but rather on assurance. And that assurance was that they could know God through nature, because our God is a God of law and order, and does not contradict Himself in nature so here are some of the names that you, you you have heard i took the most famous ones i could be citing a lot of names but of course i'll just cite a few uh, the uh, astronomer um johannes kepler kepler he, he was a minister he he believed he would uh, uh, go into ministry full-time ministry but uh, also was i'm glad was a scientist blaise pascal the wonderful mathematician, uh, Newton, Isaac Newton, uh, who wrote more, listen to me, he wrote more about theology than he wrote about science. Again, I repeat it, he, more, he wrote more about Christianity and theology than he wrote about science. So uh, that's what drove those, those men to discover amazing things. Uh, Bru uh, uh, Giordano Bruno, who was an astronomer, Francis Bacon, who was a father on, of uh, empiricism, uh, Galileo, René Descartes, uh, Robert Boyle, Louis Pasteur, Thomas Edison, Nikola Tesla, to, uh, some newer ones. But those men were driven uh, by their by their Christian faith. Uh, um, I don't know how strong the last two were. Uh, Thomas Edison. The reason I mentioned Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla is because they had quotes, you know. But uh, how uh, ridiculous it would be not to believe in in God because it is thanks to God and the knowledge of Him that we can discover things. Uh, but the reason I mentioned those two is Thomas Edison is from uh, well, he's from New Jersey, but he he had a house in my town where I live in Southwest Florida, and we have a big museum here, and he's covered over one thousand uh, discoveries. He was the man the, of the twentieth century, uh, voted 
Um, I think by Time Magazine, it doesn't matter as the scientist of the 20th century. What, what about uh, Greer Mendel, uh, uh, the one who discovered the genetics yes. or, yes, or the, the genes? Yeah. Oh, we can we can name so many. Um, uh, absolutely, Nikola Tesla. The reason I mentioned him is because he's from my parents' country, and he's a big uh, pride of uh, of uh, the former Yugoslavia. Uh, one parent was from Croatia. One parent was from Serbia, like my parents, and he was a wonderful man. Apparently, according to many people, and I have a friend who wrote a book uh, on on uh, Edison, and I asked him. I said, "Is it true?" Serbs said that. Uh, Edison stole most of his ideas from Tesla because Edison was driven. Tesla was not driven at all. He just wanted to discover things. And he said, I hate to say it, but it is true. Okay. So anyway. So and we're not talking about Tesla, the car here. Okay. Yeah, well, not, well, well, that's that's why the car, car was called Tesla. Yeah. After Nikola Tesla. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, because you said Tesla is not driven. It was kind of funny. You know, I hope Elon Musk doesn't hear you. But actually, in a second thought, I hope he hears you and tweets about us. That'll be great. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I like that. I, I, there was no pun intended. Uh, yeah, he was driven, driven uh, by you know by Christian faith. So here's what uh, I would just want to quote a few people: uh, Copernicus, Kepler, and uh, some uh, even Darwin and the Pasteur. So here, here's what some of the quotes: Copernicus said, "To know the mighty works of God, to comprehend His wisdom." And majesty and power to appreciate in degree the wonderful workings of his laws. Surely, all this must be a pleasing and acceptable um, uh, mode of worship to the Most High, to whom ignorance cannot be more gratifying than knowledge. So again, he was he explaining that it is, uh, you know, uh, it is to know the mighty works of a God, and it's a form of worship when we discover things. In you know, Kepler said. Since we astronomers are priests of the highest God in regard to the book of nature, it befits us to be thoughtful, not to the glory of our minds. Here is somebody who's pretty smart. Not to the glory of our minds, but rather above all else of the glory of God. And I pray that no matter what we do uh, as apologists and, and theologians, uh, whatever God grants us, ministries, big ministries, that we will stay humble to remember that everything is by the grace of God. Um, if, and Kepler was, was mentioning that, and I think that was very powerful that he would mention that. Darwin himself said, the question whether there exists a creator and ruler of a universe has been answered in the affirmative by some of the highest intellects that have ever existed. So that's from uh, Darwin. Uh, of course, he, he may not have believed it, um, but uh, again, uh, a lot of those people who have come uh, strongly against Christianity usually have some uh, some issues uh, from from uh, you know from uh, their family, their communities. But anyway, that's a different uh, topic. And then I want to end it with uh, Louis Pasteur, uh, who said, "Posterity will one day laugh at the foolishness of modern materialistic philosophers." The more I study nature, the more I stand amazed, amazed at the work of the Creator. I pray while I am engaged at my work in the laboratory. So here is somebody who, um, who took it as a way of um, as foolishness, and it is foolishness. I hate to say it. I used to be an atheist. I believe it's complete foolishness, foolishness to believe that all of this fine-tuned, we would never, Brother Al, as you know, we would never look at anything n not even closely fine-tuned as, as the universe and think that it came about by accident, by chance, random chance. You don't look at a cathedral with beautiful, beautiful windows and, and say, well, it just came about, you know, with uh, time and, and chance and, and stuff flying in the air and, you know, that's ridiculous. You would be laughed at by people if you said that, that there was no engineer behind it. And somehow, somehow, we believe that the universe came about by chance and, and you know, random chance. And that is absolutely and, foolishness. And I, can't, I can't believe that I, I used to believe that. Yeah, I know. And, and I encourage people, of course, to go to uh, the Genesis account, the uh, uh, creation account, and you'll see something interesting in the beginning God. In other words, God is really not interested whether you believe he existed or not. He can care less about that. He's telling you, I am here and here is my creation. And he begins to give you that creation account. And the same thing, interestingly, happened in John, uh, basically in the New Testament, in the beginning, the, the word. 
and then it says nothing was made aside from him. So um, absolutely, brother, uh, it's it's just fascinates me how people can overlook things. Now I know you said you're gonna uh, you know venture into some issues related with the Quran and the scientific miracles in there. So I don't want to jump ahead of you, but I just want people to hear that we are going to get into that uh, arena pretty soon here today. Yes, because the, the Quran, Islam claims something very different than Christianity. We don't claim that the Bible is a scientific book. We just claim that by knowing God and seeking God, we will discover as a society, not every single person individually, because our gifts and talents may not be in science, uh, but we will discover things about God in other areas. And uh, I think that's very important, you know, in worship, we discover about God, right? In in uh, in in music, in 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 creativity, in art, uh, in artistic things, in uh, uh, in gardening, in uh, in and also in seeking uh, to discover, uh, you know, things about nature, uh, natural discoveries. We discover about God. So I think that's very important. But the Quran and Islam claim something very very different. Um, just before I jump into that, I did want to mention that there are two kinds of revelations. In Christianity, one is called general general revelation, and one is right. called special special revelation. General revelation comes from Romans and basically says that no one is uh, with with uh, without excuse. Uh, so we have no excuse if we don't believe in a higher power, in a, in a intelligent design, in some kind of mind outside. We're complete fools if we believe that all of this came from nothing. That's complete foolishness. And I can't believe I used to believe it, but that's complete foolishness. And actually, actually, it's uneducated, extremely uneducated. Uh, but that is called general revelation. Just because you believe in a creator, just because you believe in an intelligent design or a higher uh, being, uh, doesn't mean you're saved. Uh, you need special revelation. And special revelation from a gospel comes from a gospel. That's what saves you. But uh, so no one, uh, whether they are Christians or not, should ever uh, be believing. Uh, and they're fools if they believe that all of this came from nothing and came without any, a supreme being, an intelligent being, uh, that a mind behind all of this. And the fine tuning, if, if, if uh, the planets, everything was one, one millimeter uh, different, differently tuned than it is right now, and you know how vast the universe is, we would not be able to survive. If it was a little closer to us, we would die. Uh, if we were a little farther away, we would freeze. Uh, you know, we would either burn up, or we, you know, we, we, or we would have no ox oxygen. Everything is made perfectly, um, finely tuned, so that we can survive. Okay, let's jump into uh, Islam. Uh, if you don't mind uh, giving me a second, brother. Uh, first, I want to thank again uh, everyone who is with us here. This is Let Us Reason live stream with me here, brother Alex Blagajevich, and we're going through his book, Why I Trust in the Bible, and we've been taken uh, he has 25 reasons in the book um, by the way the book has yet to be published in case you're uh, you're wondering about that so we're going through these reasons today he's focusing on reason number 15 which happens to be uh, dealing with the scientific miracles and that's why we're gonna venture into the idea that the Quran lately is being showcased as a scientific book which by the way myself and David Wood and then myself and Jay Smith I'm gonna use what Sam Shimon says decimated these arguments okay mm -hmm. and here's what i tell my muslim uh, friends if we can disprove a single scientific yeah. miracle in the quran we disprove yeah. the whole book Absolutely. period i don't need to waste my time over the rest of them just one and that's it now i i'm glad alex mentioned that we don't go around carrying the bible and saying this is a scientific book yeah. you know you don't find uh, uh, christian theologians and christian apologists walking around telling you oh well look this is our scientific book we make these kind of claims we don't even venture into these kind of ideas i don't know why our muslim friends want to embarrass themselves sometimes with these kind of arguments i tell the rest of the muslims please don't listen to those Taoist who are misleading you by making you think that their book has any scientific value in it yeah. whatsoever also, I want to thank those who gave through the super chat. Thank you, Sister Anada. Thank you, uh, Zamzam. And thank you for all of you uh, uh, who really sacrificed to be here with us, to watch us, to listen to us, to even moderate for us. So I'm thankful for all of you. And before we close today, I want you to pay attention to some of the announcements I'll be making as well. So, brother, I'll turn it over to you again. Thank you. 
Yes, thank you. I was laughing when you were saying that uh, my book, book is not published yet, and I was thinking because if I wait too long, somebody else is going <laughs> to take all these ideas and publish it. So uh, now that yeah, they have I mean, all, it's, all... it's ready. The manuscript is ready. You need just I, to uh, uh, get it published, it's, man. Yeah, it's, it's ready. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm getting it edited now, but now I'm getting all the information, so somebody else could write it. But anyway, it doesn't matter. As long as God, God I, is... I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to publish it under a different name, so I will not just find it. Fine, hey. You know, uh, uh, to God the glory, man. That's all I want. I want God to be glorified. Um, and I will charge the least amount possible that I can just to break even. I don't want to make money. I just want people to be blessed. And actually, we'll probably lose money because I'll probably be giving a lot of, uh, away. But anyway, uh, so I think it's important, yes, to, 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 to talk about it because uh, it's different. And by the way, by the way, I'm a super pragmatic person. To me, either it works or doesn't work, okay, in, 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 in reality. So whatever I do in life, it has to work. It's, you know, prag pra I'm super pragmatic, super pragmatic. And the reason I'm saying that is because if Islam was such a great, and if the Quran was such a great scientific book, then surely, and I know that there's been periods of times where, where Muslims have, have, you know, have discovered some things. And, of course, I will never say the Chinese also have discovered things. I mean, we, we, I would never say it's all or nothing, but what, what's interesting, if the Quran were, were the, the, uh, the, the word of God and, were, uh, and, and, and again, the claims of the Quran are much stronger about science than the Bible, if it were uh, a book with scientific, uh, cl scientific, scientific claims uh, that are accurate and hints, uh, hindsights that uh, Muhammad had into the future, then surely, Surely, uh, the Muslims who are, what, 1.7, 1.8 billion, I don't even know what number is, but would surely discover at least 50%, at the very least 50% of all discoveries in the world. And guess what? With this coronavirus, you think, you think the a Muslim will discover a, a cure? No. It's going to be either coming from the United States, the East, Western Europe, or from Israel, the small country of Israel, which is only 8 million people, okay? Those, they discover more, 8 million people discover more, and I know Muslims don't like to hear that, but 8 million people discover more scientific, more scientific discoveries than 1.7 billion Muslims. And that goes to show you something is wrong with Islam uh, altogether. Anyway, so here, just a few examples of a Quran and some of the blunders that they make scientifically. And I think it's important to say that, again, not by hatred towards my Muslim friends, because I, I know some of my Muslim friends are watching, but because I love them and I want them to know the truth. And that's the greatest love I can give them. I cannot give them greater love. So here are some of the claims from the Quran that were that are completely, completely wrong. We know to be wrong. Well, the, the first one is that the semen is formed between the backbone and ribs as of uh, Surah, which is chapter 86, verses 6 to 7, tell us, uh, talking about human reproduction. And we know today that to be completely wrong. And here's the, if you study Islam with the hadiths, uh, you will see the, the, um, the chronology of the human reproduction and how a, a baby is formed. And it is completely wrong. Every single step of the way is wrong. Uh, number one, uh, the semen joins the female semen. And that is wrong. Then, number two, uh, whichever, whichever semen is first discharged is the, 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 the child will resemble the parent. That is wrong. That is not true. Uh, we know that not to be true at all. Number three, the child spends 40 days for in the womb as a sperm. And we know that not to be true. The next 40 days, some from 40 to 80, he spends as a clot, uh, a blood clot. We also, a, a, a clot of, yeah, a clot of blood. We also know that to be false. Uh, then it becomes a lump. We know that also to be false. Then it becomes, the next step, it becomes bones. We also now know that to be false, scientifically. Then it becomes, the bones are wrapped up into flesh. And we know also that not to be false. And finally, the okay, flesh. Let's, let's, let's stop right here. Are you telling me, Alex, are you telling me that the modern science is contradicting the Quran? 
Yes, that absolutely. The MRI Mohammed. and the ultrasounds and everything is contradicting. Everything. Right? Yes, yes. Mohammed had the, this idea of a human reproduction, and it is completely uh, rejected by modern science. And since we know now how reproduction is, we know that the semen is not uh, formed from uh, between the back, backbone and the ribs. And we know that though these steps are not the chronologic uh, steps of, uh, of a reproduction. Of course, Muslims will dance around it, but then they have to basically say that the Quran is not clear enough, that they have to add something to the interpretation of the Quran, which then makes the word of Allah quite confusing. If you need somebody, because I thought it was very simple to understand and it should be the word, literal word of Allah. And then finally, uh, you know, the, the next step is that the flesh then decides the sex. Well, we know that that's not true either. So that's that's one of the points that uh, I want to mention. There are a few few more. Could I go through? I mean, well, let's let's uh, spend this ten minutes, right? On that, is that okay? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, ten, fifteen minutes, no problem, brother. Uh, okay. I want to just I, I want to highlight something. Uh, you know, uh, secondhand. Uh, one of the uh, viewers here is uh, quoting uh, Christian apologetics, saying. If the Quran basically is a scientific miracle, why didn't yeah. we have Muslim mm -hmm. scientists winning uh, the Nobel Prize uh, from the 16th to the 20th century? That's an excellent question to ask. Yeah. That's an excellent question. If you have such amazing discoveries, such yeah. way in advance ahead of its time discoveries, how come we're not seeing any? such thing taking place so thank you for that question go ahead thank brother you so much brother al for posting that and the reason i'm so grateful you posted that is because as i'm speaking of those things i'm thinking of my friend sweet man sweet really sweet man i like him a lot he 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 has two phds from al-azhar university <laughs> so uh so he went to the highest and oldest uh, uh muslim uh university in the world in egypt and he, he was talking to me, and we started talking about science and all that. And he exactly, that was exactly his concern. As a Muslim, he believes in the Quran, he believes in Islam. He, you know, he, he's not a Christian, he's not anti-Muslim, he is a Muslim. He believes in the Quran. He has a serious problem with why Islam is lagging behind every single, everybody else on this science. If the Quran has so many scientific claims, that are accurate. Why? Why are Muslims behind the eight ball? Why are they lagging in in science when we know that every discovery, pretty much every single discover discovery, will ever be made by countries that are, are based on Judeo-Christian uh, values or Israel, the small, tiny country of Israel, eight million people. I think there are nine, but one million of them are Arabs. So eight million uh, uh, Jews. A discover and why do you think listen to this why do you think the greatest lawyers are jewish because the law was given to moses the law was given to the jews and in the old testament and so as as jews naturally were learning about the old testament naturally they were good at the law because they knew the law inside and out that doesn't mean make mean that they were always honest you know in in, in their secular uh, uh jobs and a lot of times lawyers are not, but that's that's beside the point. The point is that they, because they know the law so well from God, they were good and went into law here on earth too. So here's um, a, uh, some other points in the in the in the Quran. I wanna, I wanna add one more thing because we just mentioned that there are no Muslims who have won the Nobel Prize. The same person is saying there is someone by the name Abdul Salam who okay. is an Ahmadiyya Muslim. Uh -huh. It doesn't count. I'm yeah. sorry to say it. It does not count, period. Yeah. We're talking Sunni Orthodox Muslims. That's what we want. Yes. If there is such a thing, bring it to our attention, please. Yeah, right, and well, I think I think that's quite interesting. Ahmadiyya Muslims or even uh, uh, Sufis. You know, when people tell me, oh, what do you think of Sufis? Because a lot of people don't know Hamadian uh, uh, Muslims, but they know a lot of Sufi Muslims, or I've heard of Sufi Islam. I, I just had a Buddhist friend of mine ask me what, do, what I follow of Sufism. I said, do you, do you like it? Because it seems pretty interesting as for a Buddhist, you know, I, I would expect that. And I said, actually, the interesting part is that although I don't believe in Sufism, obviously, 
it is closer to Christianity than it is to Islam because to this idea of experiencing God uh, is so such a blasphemy in, in Islam and so Sufi Sufis or Hamadian uh, uh, Muslims are, are, are and they they've been persecuted actually by uh, by oh yeah and, and I when somebody's asking why it doesn't count because you and I know Nabil Qureshi for instance was an Ahmadiyya Muslim sure. uh, Ahmadiyya Muslims, first of all, they are a heretical sect out of Islam anyway. They started about 200 years ago. They're named after their founder, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, who claimed, by the way, to be yeah. the second coming of Christ in the spirit, meaning the spirit of Christ. In, he was he's the embodiment of that. And yeah. they believe Jesus was crucified. Islam doesn't teach that at all. Yeah. But they don't believe Jesus died on a cross, of course, the swoon theory. Yeah. And the list can go on and on and on. You mentioned yeah. they're very persecuted uh, by Muslims because of these reasons. Yes, yes, thank you for mentioning that. And also, I do want to mention that even if there were dozens of Muslims, you know, who had were Nobel Prize the last, you know, 30 years or whatever, uh, still would not impress me. So, because again, remember, Islam has grown now to be the second world religion uh, and uh, with uh, most uh, uh, believers, I mean, again, Christianity is what, 2 point some billion, uh, 2.1 maybe billion. Uh, Islam is right behind, just uh, uh, catching up with 1.7, 1.8. I don't even know the number anymore, but it's very close. So you would expect uh, more of it, but because there's actually a fraction between Islam and science, uh, believe it or not, again, Islam should be, if Islam were true, the Quran were true, and, and the Bible was false and was corrupted, uh, then is Muslims surely would find out more about nature and about God, but because they don't believe in creating God's image, they don't believe that uh, science is really that important. And when you really look into it, a lot of Muslims believe that science is kind of like from the devil, really. It can be really deceitful and can give you wrong ideas about uh, and, and drag you away from, from Islam and from the Quran, where Christ Christians, as Christians, we absolutely don't believe that. If, it was, if it's true, it's true. If it's true, it's from God. It doesn't matter. If a one plus one equals two, it's true, it's from God. It's the law of nature, and the law of nature describes the law of God. So again, uh, so the, uh, uh, the second point I had is that uh, the Quran mentions that the earth is flat, in, uh, as we see in Surah chapter, again, uh, for those who don't know what Surah. Brother, I was in a lecture hall listening to the Grand Mufti of Saudi Arabia, Mm -hmm. And he was arguing against the idea that the yeah. earth is not flat because the Quran said it was flat. I couldn't believe what I was watching right before my eyes. And no one dared to even contradict him, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah. And uh, sadly, sadly, some Christians believe in a, a flat earth. But uh, uh, but, yeah, uh, but, but it's, 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 silly, it's silliness. Uh, but, the, but the bottom line is you cannot control people. People are going to believe what they believe. Just because they say they're Christian, Muslim, whatever. And I do expect some Muslims to believe, have ideas that are closer to Christianity. Again, I'm not saying that every single Muslim in the world believes in the Quran or, or Islam. They may be actually brainwashed to, be, to believe something else. But the, the Quran does make the blunder, uh, the false uh, uh, is, uh, um, scientific claim that the earth is flat in, in Surah chapter Again, I'm repeating uh, chapter 80, and, uh, verse 20. Alicia, Alicia, good luck. Absolutely, that was Bimbaz. Thank you for pointing that out. Yes. Go ahead, brother. Thank you so, uh, so much. Uh, then, you know, it talks about that the uh, sun and the moon chase each other around the earth in uh, Surah 36, uh, verses 38 to 40. Uh, somehow, as of uh, planets and stars, and we'll look at stars also, are used by God for spiritual reasons, uh, nothing scientific, again, just uh, uh, something that uh, we know to not to be true at all. Science, science completely rejects that. Uh, the Quran, I know we don't have a lot of time, so I'll go a little faster, but uh, the Quran claims that there are seven earths uh, stuck up, stacked up like, like pancakes, uh, one of the, uh, on top of each other, the Surah chapter 65 and verse 12. And by the way, when Muslims uh, try to defend those verses, then all you have to do, then take them to the commentaries, to the hadiths, and then you will see, as I will mention later uh, uh, in, in, um, uh, in one of the points uh, in uh, Abu Dawud, where it explains exactly what the Quran means. So again, 
so just because Muslims try to today to twist things and try to give it a different meaning, uh, you cannot depart from uh, explanation given by Muslims themselves. So I just want to mention that. Uh, uh, number five, embryos are blood clots. Uh, in in, uh, in uh, uh, chapter 22, Surah 22, verse 5. Um, interestingly, it mentions in uh, Surah uh, 37, uh, verses 6 to 10, and also 67, verses 5, verse 5, that uh, stars are demons that, uh, uh, that are, are, are shooting, I'm sorry, not demons, uh, stars are used to shoot demons um, out, of, out, of, uh, out of paradise. We're trying to enter paradise, uh, uh, shooting stars. But then again, that's one of the points that um, you will hear uh, uh, Muslims uh, defend saying, no, 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 that's not what he's talking about. It's not talking about shooting stars. But if you go in the Hadith, it explains that it is uh, shooting stars in the Hadith. Uh, and it's Sahih, Sahih uh, Hadiths. And then a uh, uh, couple more, uh, just I'll mention one more before we go, because we're the one hour, I, don't, I won't be respectful to people, but uh, it mentions that in, uh, in Surah 18, verses 83 to 86, it mentions that the sunset, sunsets in the, uh, in the black muddy water. So the idea was that Alexander the Great had traveled so far uh, to the west that he actually ended up where the sun sets. He saw the sun setting, and Mohammed believed that the sun set it in the in the black muddy water. Of course, Muslims will say no, that's not what he's talking about, all that. But then you go, like I mentioned, in the hadith Abu Dawood, and uh, when um, asked, the, the Muhammad was asked by one of his companions, "Do you know where the sun sets?" That's how Abu Dawood uh, relates the story, and Muhammad answered it sets in a spring of water. So he again confirmed what he believed that the sun sets in actual pool of water. And we ab uh, absolutely know today that that's not true. Uh, so those are some of the blunders that uh, the uh, Quran makes. And I think it's important for our Muslim friends to know that because they, their claim is much, much stronger than our claim. Our claim is not that the Bible is a scientific book. It doesn't make any of those kind of claims. Uh, all we know is that if we see God, which is what it's all about in Christianity, the more we see God and we seek a personal relationship with him, the more we will know about him. And the more, because we're creating his image, we will know about uh, nature and we'll find discover more. And that's why we put every single other um, system in place to shame when it comes to discoveries and muslims may not like it but most of the reasons they live a longer life is thanks to jews they may not like jews but you know the, the reason they, they live longer and uh, and they have pacemakers and all that the, all all of those discoveries uh most of the a lot of discoveries even watching the internet intel and all that those were jewish companies um they may not like it but again because of a judeo christian understanding of God, which is very different from, from Islam, that we are creating God's image and that we can actually have a relationship with him and we can discover about him in nature through general revelation that we can discover about God and it's a way of worship him. him. And the reason I wanted to mention these, these passages here, uh, brother, and then I'll, I'll be done. The reason I wanted to mention these passages in the Quran is because the, the claim of Islam is much stronger when it comes to scientific claims being accurate and i just wanted to point out to our friends muslim friends that they are not uh thank you brother i uh, appreciate that i just want to i want to come back and clarify you know uh some people here are picking on the idea that no muslims won the nobel prize we're talking mm -hmm. about scientists yes. and yes there are three muslim scientists who won none of their winning have anything to do with quranic discoveries so let's be clear if the Quran is a book of science, yeah. and it has miracles, then we need someone to prove to us these miracles in a scientific research yes. and win a prize. Okay, is that clear enough? There are polit politicians, by the way, that won also. That doesn't yeah. count also. We're not talking about politi uh, mm -hmm. policy, politics or, or politicians here. We're talking about science. Yeah. And we're talking about science of the Quran. So I want to be clear. Now, we have an interesting, uh, basically, comment by someone. I, I perceive this person is a Muslim. Okay. Maybe this person is not. Christians surprise me all the time anyway with their yeah. comments. So 
And I'm gonna put this right here because uh, there is nothing really for us to be ashamed of here. Uh, this person is saying, I guess Jesus taught his disciples to slander, insult, defame, call others pedophiles, pig eaters, and abuse a whole religion. All right, so I don't know what this person is talking about. I'm gonna just err on the side of cautious, and I'm gonna assume that this person is saying that Christians do these kind of th things. Well, okay, well, here is a scientific miracle for this person, if he is indeed a Muslim. Your prophet and the God of Islam said that Jews are monkeys. What a miracle. That's a scientific miracle yeah. right there. Yeah. Yeah. Your Quran, if you are a Muslim, of course, says that non-Muslims are vile creatures. That's a scientific miracle right there. Mm -hmm. So please don't come here and lecture us on how we ought to address these ridiculous ridiculous issues nowhere that me and alex here today did anything or said anything against any muslims yeah. we did not use such language and if there are people who are using such language against muslims please point them out to us yeah. against muslims now when it comes to falsehood and false claims yeah. and people who are making these kind of things the bible is on our side my friend and the Bible asks us to call out these ridiculous things anyway. Yeah. You don't like it? Get out of here, bro. I'm sorry. Go ahead, brother. No, I'm 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 glad you mentioned that because I don't I don't remember. I and I re I'm really careful never to attack any one single person or 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 a group of people, especially. Uh, so I don't remember in the last hour ever attacking Muslims. I never attack Muslims. All I'm attacking is some claims. And uh, if you want to win my heart or win my mind. Uh, argue with me don't you know i don't i don't care about name calling and all that that's not what i'm doing and jesus since you mentioned jesus i think it's fair to to remind this person if you do read the bible and i don't think this person has read the bible uh J jesus never never taught to slander people uh as an end or a means once in a while yes we put back some people because we uh, we, we, some people are so dishonest, especially people who know better. And I guess Sam Shem was talking about that. And I listened to him where he said, and he's right, that some people, if you, if you're talking to people who don't know any better, like he was talking about, uh, Unitarians, right? And when you talk about people who don't know any better, you give them benefit of doubt, you, you, you know, but people who know better, who know better and come against, I'm sorry, sometimes those people need to be called out. Um, uh, but Jesus never said that that's what should be our way of life no he said do everything out of love everything we do and paul also who is a pretty probably a pretty tough guy he said do everything out of love everything should be driven by love so i've said many times that this person probably has not heard me because sometimes you know but just cannot hear uh things that i'm saying but uh, how many times did i say brother al in this show that i love muslims and that has nothing to do with them. I have nothing against people. People are people, and by the way, they're creating God's image, so I actually love them even more than they can ever love me. But I don't agree with Islam. So it's perfectly okay with me to attack Islam, especially when it comes to scientific claims, when they make those claims. If we don't, if we don't uh, you know, again, attack those ideas, how have people are ever going to know truth from from false if, if lies always win and we keep quiet no we have sometimes to expose things to be untrue and everything i said here well is is it can be checked i quoted the verses and uh so again my friend no he does not uh, uh jesus not taught, taught, taught us to love to love god with all our heart our all our mind our strength and and our souls and to love our our neighbors including our enemies uh, as ourselves. So I love you. I don't know you, but I love you. But that doesn't mean I have to agree with you to love you. That's right. Once again, Ali Bilal, you are welcome here. Mm -hmm. And if we see anything that is disrespectful to people, we have those who are monitoring. But don't come here lecturing us, bro. Don't ever come here lecturing us. You are not welcome to lecture us here because we know how we are being treated at the other sites. We do things biblically. What the Lord taught us to say, we will say it, and we are not ashamed of it, and we owe no apology to anybody. Yeah. Falsehood is falsehood, and that's yeah. all that there is to it. So thank you, brother, for being here. Thank you, thank thank you, you. of course, for uh, sharing with us uh, another reason. Uh, can you give people a teaser about next week? What other sure. reason? 
they so, should expect so, uh, next week we're gonna get into the subject it's funny because i was just talking about loving right i said no i love a lot of people so next week we're gonna talk about the about love and uh and uh i uh, i'm gonna try to uh, uh so we're we're gonna next point is really i talk about it was is about jesus's miracles and so i hopefully we won't spend an hour i think i think we'll be done within uh, 20 30 minutes so we should be able to then jump into the concept of love which is unique so i want my muslim yeah. friends who are watching i want them to define love for me and then we'll talk about it next week and i guarantee you i guarantee you they will not be able to define it and well, i do want you, I do. I do want to mention something. By the way, when uh, when I tell a lot of my Muslim friends that uh, you know there are no no scientists, Muslim scientists, and you know of course there are few, but they're not. Yeah, there should be many, many more. Uh, they always go back to conspiracy because everything is controlled by the Jews, uh, and that you know, and of course uh, uh, Muslims are persecuted and uh, they cannot get ahead because everything is controlled by the Jews. And then goes to show me that if a God of six million people, eight million people in israel can be more powerful if they can be more powerful than 1.7 billion muslims uh that goes to show me that maybe their god is true amen brother amen thank you so much and thank you again for everyone by the way thank you for those who gave through super chat rabbi barkak uh, habibi Aydan, uh, uh who just gave also from canada uh we uh want to remind people of the following too. Tomorrow, I have a special guest. I, I really requested that, that he appears on live stream uh, to talk about turning the table, Islamic apologetics. Our Muslim friends love to talk about things from the Bible. So I love to take the same argument and turn the table around. And we're going to talk about the importance of context, by the way. And I love the phrase that he used. Uh, we may end up even using this title. Uh, the late Ravi Zacharias mentioned and said the following. He said a text out of context is a pretext mm. a text out of context is a pretext so that will be the the essence of our show tomorrow to show you that when you take things out of context you can make up anything you want to anything absolutely anything is possible because now nobody knows the context behind the the phrase itself why was it used what is the background behind it in our bible things don't work this way because the bible is a beautiful book that anyone can read it and be able to understand if they really approach it with an honest desire to learn the word of god says your word makes wise the simple i believe mm. the word of god and the word of god will help you know things so that's going to happen tomorrow on friday i have robert spencer i am honored that he accepted our invitation most likely we're going to be talking about the either Sharia in general or the history of Jihad. I, I'm going to leave it up to him to decide that by tomorrow. Hopefully we'll know and we'll proceed forward from there. This Sunday, we are going to uh, basically have uh, Mike uh, Westerfield back with us. And uh, we will be talking about the psychology of Islam, the th psychology of Islam. In fact, it's going to be a, a, a host of series, uh, a video series that we'll be covering to talk about how can people convert to Islam, what happens when they convert, what prevents them from uh, basically exploring the truth outside of Islam, uh, whether it's fear, it's psychology, it's barriers, so on and so forth. It's a cultural issue sometimes. Uh, so we will be covering a lot of things like this next week. I'm not going to really spoil a lot of things for you, but I can tell you, be uh, basically aware of the fact that we're going to have what, what I call a Let Us Reason Prime on Friday, June 5th. We are going to talk about the psychology of jihad. I've already showed you the promo for that video. Be praying, be praying that we don't face a lot of oppositions. It's not attacking Muslims at all. We want to talk about this ideology and doctrine of jihad and how it have a strong grip in the minds and the hearts of young Muslims who truly believe that shedding their own blood is going to earn, allow them to earn paradise mm -hmm. when the Lord Jesus Christ have shed his blood for them already. And more on that in the next couple of days. Brother, thank you as always. Mm -hmm. We are blessed to have you here. Don't tell Sam Shimon that we have close to 200 views. He gets jealous all the time. So we're not going to let him know that. <laughs> and uh, we're honored to have you. And hopefully next week we will continue with this uh, exciting and interesting discussion about these reasons. They're really important, brother, because I know many 
Muslims uh, have doubts sometimes about the Bible. Many Christians sometimes question mm -hmm. the Bible, but it's good that you are going through this to give one reason after another in a simplified fashion. Yes, and I welcome, I welcome, and I know we're going way over. I welcome the questioning and the uh, of the Bible. Please, that's that's my that's our job is to research because we're not afraid of the truth. Amen. Uh, last words, brother. Anything you want to share before no, we close? I'm just, I'm just super happy to be with you. Bless. I want to uh, bless people who are watching in Jesus' name, and they may be blessed. And uh, they, I pray that they will all, if they know Jesus, that they will grow closer and more in love with Him every day. And if they don't know Jesus, I pray and I would love for them to come to Jesus because there's nothing like it. Absolutely nothing like it. Amen. And uh, final uh, words, uh, you've noticed that our amazing moderators have been promoting our own online church, the King's Church. Please go and subscribe to it, uh, to our YouTube channel for that, and go also and like or and follow the page. Thank you so much, everyone. Love you all. God bless. Take care.